All right, Dan, um, what kind of setup do we have here? Well, I heard that if you move a magnet through a coil of wire, it generates an EMF. If you attach something to it and have a circuit, you can light up a light bulb or something. And so I tried it, it seemed to work, but it was hard to get quantitative results so I could see what affected it. And so what I did is I put a coil around this tube and I can drop the magnet through so it'll be going through the coil about the same speed every time. And then I can alter how many loops there are in the coil to see what effect that is too, just by winding the wire around. Okay, and it looks like um, that loop is connected to this voltage sensor here. So the voltage was act as a proxy for the EMF generated. Oh, okay. And we can measure that using capstone. And so let's give it a try. All right, so before I start recording data from that voltage sensor, I'm just gonna click zero. Uh, yeah, definitely and, zero it. And then also notice the the sample rate, the rate that data is being collected is really high because I think that thing's going to go through pretty quick, right? Right. So we're going to record 1,000 data points per second. All right. So are you ready? Yep. Click record. It definitely did something when it went through. Let's expand that, see what that looks like. Okay. So let me just zoom in here. Oh, look at that. So there's a little bit of a dip down and then a dip up as it goes through, right? So when it's falling toward the loop, the voltage is measured to be negative. And when it's falling away, positive, that's interesting. Okay. And I think in this, um, in this experiment, we're going to want to figure out what the, uh, the maximum voltage is as it goes through, whether it's negative or positive, and we want the absolute value of that, right? Yeah, just take the magnitude of it. The magnitude, so. so but these are really, yeah, so, so it's like 0.02 something, uh, but these are really tiny numbers. It'd probably, probably be a good idea to do multiple trials. Okay, all right, so. So let's drop it, say, four times through. Okay, so, so let me, not, I'm gonna delete this run. This was sort of a test. So I'll just click delete, and then just for good practice, zero. I'll click zero again. Okay. And then I'll click record. Okay. There's one. There's one. Two. Yeah. And you're dropping the same end of the magnet right. first each time, right? Yeah, I don't have it marked north or south, but I put a little mark just to tell. Okay, so yeah, so if it was the north, you, the north end goes in first every time kind of thing, right? So there's some variation there. So I think doing multiple trials was a good idea. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, read off the maximum and then average them together for so, each pair. So it looks like for this one, the setup that we have, the negative spike is has a greater magnitude than the positive spike. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. So value. every time. Yeah, so this one is negative 0.024, but we want the magnitude, so we're just gonna use 0 0.024. 0 0.024. Okay, and then the next one is 0 0.024. And then the next one is 0 0.023. And then the next one is 0 0.023. Okay, so you could probably guess that average. And so it's uh, 0.0235. Okay, so. And so I think we have a data table set up for that. That's right. And so we've got a data table that shows number of loops and whatever the average is that we just calculated. Uh, and so for one loop, our average was 0 0.02, excuse me, 0 0.0235. Right? Yeah, it's probably, you know, since it's five, we'll put that extra. Yeah. place there. So now let's double the loops and you want to make sure that you turn it in the same direction as the first loop. So it's winding around in this direction. So now I have two loops about the same area each. So I've doubled the area of the loops. Oh, I see. Because if you took the two loops and spread them out to one big loop, that's double the area similar. of one loop. Yeah. Okay, I got it. This will be easier. So two loops now, right? But we're still dropping it from a same height, 25 centimeters. Okay, all right. Just let me know when you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, go ahead. Uh, we see the, the spike is noticeably <laughs> taller. 
Good. That means I wound it in the wrong direction. The right direction. I mean, right direction. <laughs> Here we go. All right. And so this one, it looks like the positive spike is the taller of the two, positive versus negative. So I'm going to use my coordinates tool. And I'm just going to show this. We're not actually going to write, write this down or calculate the average, but we just pop that there, take that value, do it for those four runs. We got to leave them something to do, right? right. Yeah. So your job is to figure out which one of those is the greatest uh, peak for each pair and average the four values together for all four mm -hmm. pairs and enter that in the data table for two loops. Okay. And so let's do a Three third loop. loop. And the, the loops are, we keep the loops at the same place in the tube right? for all of these runs, right? Yeah, kind of sort of averaged around 25 centimeters. Okay, so 25 centimeters from the top. So right. we're dropping the magnet from 25 centimeters above the Every loop. Every time, Every pretty time. much. Okay. All right, so now we got three loops. I'm gonna go ahead and click record and we're ready. Yep, and this one is taller than the previous. That's four. four. That looks pretty good. So three loops, four. All right, you ready? Ready. Oops, that went down just a little bit. There we go. Two. So I have bubble wrap in here because magnets are fragile and we don't want it to get cracked. Four. There we go, That's four runs. No, excuse me, not four runs, four drops. And now for five loops. Five loops. This will be the last one before we do our analysis, see what's going on here. There we go. All right, five loops, ready? Yep. Oh, do that one again, go ahead. Too fast for you. Yeah, too fast for me. There we go. Yeah, four. Here we go. And a little variation, so I still think it's a good idea to do multiple trials. Always, always is. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at all the runs together just to see how okay. the amplitudes changed. So. Um, I click this button here and then I can turn on all of the previous runs <clears throat> uh, and you see run one is blue, two is purple, uh, three is this other color here that's shaded a little bit and you see the successive runs, the spike or the magnitude gets a little bit taller. So as we increase the loops, we got more EMF. With them. And so you're going to do some analysis with the data and create a graph. And if you see a trend, you should be able to use that trend to predict something. And so in this case, you're going to predict what the uh, voltage would be if we had eight loops. And so you're going to predict that. And then so you can see how well your prediction went, uh, we will collect the eight loops. But don't cheat. Don't look at it <laughs> before you make your prediction. Uh, and, and I think you'll find that your prediction will work out well. All right. So now we need eight. We're, gonna, okay. we're at five, so we need five. to wind it three more times. So you want to help me count here? Sure. So five. So make sure we have five to start with. Five, six, seven, eight. eight. Okay. I always want to be careful counting. <laughs> make sure you've got eight. And I put them so their average height anyway is 25 centimeters Same below as well. the top. Same as what we use for all so the So again, you're going to predict what will happen, and here we're going to collect the actual. All right. Ready? Yep. Looks 
good. And there we go. So you can use that to test your prediction. So, you know, we were noticing there's a little difference between the reading for the top and bottom. Was there any sort of trend? Is the one where the magnet's going in higher or when it's coming out higher? In other words, the first versus the second. Yeah, let's take a look at this one right here. This is such a tiny difference. Uh, let's take a look at that one there. So it's just a little bit different, but doing all these, you might notice that the second one is usually higher. And so I was thinking that was because the magnet's going a little bit faster as it's leaving the loop than when it's coming in. But it's really hard to tell. So our next investigation is going to be um, changing the height of the loop. Okay. And so if you change the height of the loop, you're going to still drop the magnets from the top of the tube. From the right? top. So the distance between the drop and the coil is getting starts off smaller. Right. So then it's going to be going a little bit slower when it goes through, right? So now I have it five centimeters from the top. So the magnet will have only fallen a short distance. It'll okay. be going kind of slow compared to um, from the 25 centimeter. All right. And we're also going to title all these runs so you'll be able to tell the ones who already took will say 25 centimeter height and then the number of loops. Now we have eight loops and so we'll have eight loops and say what the height is. Okay. So let me just, just to be safe, click zero here. Uh, and we got eight loops, five centimeters. So the magnet's going to drop five centimeters. Yeah. So not very far. All right. You ready? Yep. Good. There we go. Almost too fast for you. <laughs> but still definitely a spike. Yeah. Even though it's going a lot slower. Yep. And there's four. And so you mentioned a second ago that <clears throat> one spike is has a lower magnitude than right. the other. And you see here the negative spike goes down just past about 0.05, and this one goes about halfway in between 0.05 and 0.1. So that difference in speed shows up more here than down at 25. Yeah. So let's bring it to 10, so we're gonna double it. Doubling the So distance. you might wonder what happens if you double the height, is it gonna make it more or less, and if so, by what factor? Okay, you ready? Yep. Go ahead. Definitely more. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look twice as much though. Yeah. So you may have to explain that as part of the lab. And so even though you're learning about electromagnetism, you may have to do a little kinematics review to see what's going on there. All right. So but that... maybe it's just because it's so small. <clears throat> let's bring it up to, let's double it again. Let's bring it up to 20. Okay. So now you're dropping it. 20 centimeters above the coil so it's going to free fall for 20 centimeters yeah pretty much there's a little friction but it's pretty much free fall okay all right you ready yep. uh, let me um let me turn these off they're not gone i just hid them so we don't see them all right 20 centimeters And the last one. Okay. So you're not going to do a graph with this data, but you are going to get the average uh, peak voltage from each pair of those spikes and then see if you can figure out what's going on with the uh, effect of height, which is also sort of the effect of the speed of the magnet as it goes through. Okay, great. Good luck. <laughs>